If you're an e-com owner or a marketing leader, Maple has a special gift for you today. Stay with us until the end of this video. See you there. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 26th episode of Host the Pro, where disruptive influencers talk about e-commerce marketing. Today, we have Eric Benwells with us. Hey, Eric. What's up? Sign Amazing. How are you today? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Talk some marketing, yeah? Talk some business. Okay, yeah, for sure. Talks about uh, some business journey and e-commerce journeys today. Guys, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're going to have uh, an amazing interview with Eric. Uh, Eric is an e-com leader, uh, you know, build bootstrapping three companies already, right? Am I right? Yeah, I mean, I got my, my toes probably in too many projects, but most, okay, most but entrepreneurs the main one, problem. The main one is Beard Brand, yep. Yeah, the main one, be, be, Beard Brands. We're going to speak about uh, your journey with big Beard Brands uh, today um, and how growth uh, can actually be being generated from organic uh, rather than, you know, purely performance marketing and pay, right? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, as a bootstrap company, you tend to have uh, more time than cash. So you ultimately end up working on the projects that are time intensive rather than cash intensive. So uh, organic content creation, whether it be blogging or YouTube or social media posts, uh, tend to be a, a great uh, strategy for, for growing and scaling the business. Okay, amazing. So we're going to, to talk about uh, this journey today. Uh, and just before we dive in into all the steps of your growth, uh, why did you decide to bootstrap um, your brand? Yeah, so, um, you know, my my core values and, and the company's core values uh, are, are closely aligned uh, and those core values are freedom hunger and trust and it was always important for me to try to build a business of my own volition that i was able to build it the way that i wanted to do it and when i say i i mean me and my business partners that we could build it the way we want to build it and give us yeah. the kind of life that that we wanted um fortunately uh the, the three of us don't have champagne taste. So the requirements for uh, a beautiful life are very modest. Uh, I just need a roof over my head and food on the table and, uh, you know, like car to get me from back and forth and, uh, you know, good friends to be around. So uh, with e-commerce, um, it doesn't really take that much in sales to get to that point. Uh, depending on how many business partners you have, uh, if you own 100% of it, I think if you're doing about a $1.5 million in sales, you're going to be able to, you know, live the life uh, of uh, of one that very few people get to live. You know, one of freedom and autonomy. And I think that, you know that kind of gets lost in in chasing these like high growth numbers. Is is just like how, you know, relatively small. Uh, and for someone who's starting out and hasn't gotten to a million dollars in sales, that's going to seem like a, a big number. But you'll get there at one point, and you'll realize, you know, how achievable it, it really was. Um, yeah. so for us is, is, uh, wanting to control that journey for ourselves and not being beholden to investors or to banks or, uh, to third parties who don't really have the, the same, you know, direction as us. We really wanted to be beholden to our customers and, uh, to the, the team at Beard Brand and, uh, you know, kind of the team members and, and of course the founders. Yeah. You know, I think it, it has to do a lot with values, like you said, but it's, it's, I'm not taking that for granted because, you know, a lot of the times when you start a business, so you kind of, you want to see results fast, right? Uh, and kind of the easiest thing to do in the state of mind you're in, okay, let me just put money on Facebook. Let me just, you know, put those ads out. Let me see those quick wins. And then, you know, I'll start building my business, right? Uh, but then you kind of caught up with this, you know, trap of paid advertising, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's, there's no right or wrong way to build a business. And that's the beauty of it is, you know, the, the thing that I recommend to people who are, you know, pretty new in the game, uh, we're celebrating our 10 years this year, is, uh, yes. you know, focus on the things that you really uh, enjoy and that you can do for a long period of time. Because business is about persevering when, when you know, the shit hits the fan, like when you don't want to go anymore. 
And if you're doing things that you don't like doing, then it's going to become a grind. So for instance, um, you know, think about it. If, if you're kind of like data driven, uh, really into the numbers, um, Amazon is probably a great channel for you. Um, also like ad buying and all that should be your strategy. But if you're more of a, a storyteller or brand builder, then that's where I think like organic content makes a lot of sense and being able to, you know, kind of craft that message. And there's no right or wrong. You know, both companies can be very successful. Um, they both have risks and downsides. And, uh, you know, you just have to do what you feel like uh, you're going to be able to do the, for the longest period of time. Because if I had to, like, sit and look at a screen and Excel spreadsheets and data all day long, I would I would have given up a long time ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you were very much focused on the brand and the, your organic growth. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's... Brand building, uh, especially for a small company uh, like Beard Brand, uh, for people who are referenced, we're, we're kind of an upper seven-figure business uh, right now, hoping to get to eight figures pretty soon. But um, there, there's not really like this tangible uh, return on investment that you're going to see, especially not immediately. And uh, so subsequently, I, I think a lot of small companies tend not to invest much into brand building. And for us, you know, it's just kind of, what we do naturally is it's kind of like how I see the world, how I, um, uh, you know, want to, um, you know, what I want to do, you know, like I, I, I think there's more to life than just selling widgets and products and making money. Um, I, I think the, the beauty of business is that you can leverage your business to, uh, make a positive change on the world. Um, it, and I think like it happens through the messaging, and through the support and, you know, kind of the small things that you can do to help, you know, tie into that mission. And, uh, you know, like us, you can see over here, keep on growing is, is one of our taglines. And it's really important for us to, you know, help men keep on growing. And, and, you know, what does that mean? It's different for everyone, you know, like yeah. there's, there's no right or wrong way, but what, what we believe because we're a grooming company uh, for our customers and our audience, it starts by, that grooming routine and, and loving the man who looks back at you in the mirror. And for other companies, it could be like fitness. It could be, you know, lifting weights. It could be, you know, um, woodworking. And I mean, there's so many different ways to help people invest in themselves. So we just kind of want to be that conduit uh, through grooming uh, to, to, to be that catalyst for, for guys. And, and it's been great to kind of hear the stories of people who were going through it, a divorce or, you know, dealt with the, the loss of a loved one, uh, and, and like growing the beard and, you know, partaking in the grooming routine was kind of like that, that shift to, um, you know, kind of point their life in, in the direction that they wanted to go. Yeah. Wow. You know, a lot of them, you know, I, I'm just thinking about our audience and a lot of the times, you know, when you start a business, you kind of delay those kind of mission and values that you really started maybe your business with for afterwards, right? When you're going to be a big brand, it's like the big right. brand thing is to be focused on the mission, to be focused on the values. But actually, you know, when you're doing that right from day one, uh, it can, you know, it can build your business as well. I think, uh, I think it's really important for every single company to have missions uh, or to have a mission and then core values, because ultimately your mission and core values are going to be your framework, your foundation to go to when you're unsure of what kind of decision to make. Uh, you're on the fence and it's like, should I do this or should I do this? Well, my core values are built around this, uh, built, built around freedom. You know, I don't want to sign a 12 month contract. You know, that, that's, that's not how we want to do things. So we need to, you know, not go in this direction. And it's okay. You know, there's always opportunity that you miss out on. And I think that's kind of the hard thing for a lot of entrepreneurs is you see opportunity everywhere. Um, but the reality is we all have scarce resources, including Amazon and Elon Musk, and you have to be efficient at allocating those scarce resources. So, uh, you know, like the, the, the core values and the mission are going to be that whether or not you decide to build a brand out and be brand focused, you should have those things. And, and the other beauty is like, you can change it, you know, like you can evolve it uh, as you learn more, as you, you know, sure. find out if it works or doesn't work. I'm a big fan of the uh, Lean Startup, uh, yeah. the book by Eric Rice, and, uh, you know, just kind of this, this idea that you learn through doing, and uh, you learn what works and doesn't work by, by doing it. So don't be afraid to just, like, 
pick pick some things that you feel kind of represent you and the mission you feel and then you know give it a test run see if it works yeah. or it doesn't work yeah the story is a living story actually and you're kind of building it as you go um yeah so tell us a little bit about how you know your story and mission and values kind of helped you make the right business decisions or certain business decisions that you had to kind of a dilemma around yeah i mean um I, I kind of want to give maybe like a little bit of a history, like our mission in the early days was to yeah. change the way society views beardsmen. Um, this was 10 years ago. And uh, back then, uh, wearing facial hair was not as socially accepted. And what we wanted to show the world was that you can have facial hair and, and be a doctor or a lawyer or a professional. Um, there's a lot of industries where it's kind of frowned upon to, to wear facial hair. And then what happened is, uh, I feel like we were generally successful. You know, we, we were a catalyst for a lot of people, a lot of other companies who kind of supported that. And, and really, it's funny because I remember back 10 years ago, you'd look at the TV commercials and not a single uh, actor would have facial hair. Now, if you look uh, at commercials today, uh, uh, you see it everywhere. So um, I think it's yeah, just I have it at home, actually, as well. So <laughs> <laughs> My husband just started there doing that a year ago. So. Oh, good. Does he like it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, like, I obviously, I'm a big fan of beards, uh, but we also support a guy's uh, right to not have a beard as well. What we want is uh, the guys to, to love the man looking back in the mirror. Some people don't like facial hair, so that, that's cool as well. Um, so we, we evolved the mission and, you know, kind of came to what it is today, which is, you know, make men awesome and you know, it's funny I say this right now because I, I feel like this this mission is is also going to be changing. I think it's a little too broad, a little too vague. You know, what is awesome? How do how does my team know how to make someone awesome? You know, like yeah. because it's it's just such a personal word of of what awesome is. So uh, we'll be evolving it and changing it, and and you know, like the mission is still the same. It's just the words that we use to express that mission. Uh, need to be refined. And, and that mission is really about helping guys love the person who they, they look at in the mirror. And, and we believe that when guys invest in themselves, that they then have the, the energy to invest in their family and their careers and uh, their co community. And ultimately, like through a grassroots effort, you know, make the world a better place uh, through a lot of individuals improving. Uh, so that's kind of like what we're trying to do. Now, how do I get that down to a sentence? It's, it's been a little more challenging yeah. than I'd, I'd like to admit. So how does it reflect in your marketing? So there's a big mission here. Obviously, it's bigger than a company or a product or, or an ad or anything. How does it reflect with your marketing activities? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty heavy on uh, YouTube as one of our channels. And I think uh, me creating videos and kind of like just going on these like rambling, uh, essentially <laughs> is what I'm doing. Like I just ramble, uh, talking about our mission, talking about what we're, we're trying to do. and you know, not everyone's going to buy into it and that's fine. Uh, but I think like that helps, uh, you know, I'm not great at, about doing it every single video and, and maybe I should kind of do it uh, a little more, but you know, part of it is, is really trying to get in there and then it helps, uh, in our email flows, you know, we kind of, uh, work that content and, and more than that, it's, it's more about like the type of content we produce where uh, a lot of companies may focus on sales or promotions or bundles or kits. Uh, we focus on how do we help men. So uh, it's going to be like, you know, grooming tips and, you know, like relationship advice. And, you know, like I, I wrote this little booklet called a Book of Reminders. And it's a nine different uh, nine reminders that I kind of tell myself as I face adversity. And we included this in, in our orders uh, once a quarter. So it's a way for us to kind of like help help people who are receptive to this kind of messaging uh, be able to access it and, um, you know, learn to focus on the present, focus on themselves. And, uh, you know, it's the little things like that, that for me are, are pretty big, a pretty big impact. In addition to that, we do things like um, uh, style consulting. I have a, a real team member here in Austin, Texas, who, uh, if you text us, uh, you can send him photos and he'll tell you like how you should trim your beard or grow your beard out or take care of your hair or even give you advice on your, your clothing. All that's free of charge doesn't, you know, it doesn't require you to be a customer or anything like that. So 
those are like little things that we try to do that tie into the mission um, versus what I would imagine a lot of companies uh, do, which is just focus on their product. Yeah. Uh, is there you know a specific thing you would say yeah this really helped move the needle or is it like those very very small you know steps that you made yeah i would i would love to say there's a you know one golden ticket to, to business uh uh the one thing that i have mastered is uh two steps forward one step back so uh do something i feel really cocky and then i'm god's gift to to entrepreneurship and business and then i, I get humbled uh the next year so Uh, the, the big thing that I would recommend is just kind of perseverance and willingness to just, you know, stay committed, stay true. I think um, for us, you know, YouTube's been a really big platform for us. I would say that's probably the, the number one driver of our, our sales. Um, we've also been fortunate because we are so brand focused, mission focused that we ended up on uh, Shark Tank, which is a uh, Uh, you know, a national publication many years ago, many years ago, but that was a kind of a nice catalyst and a spark to, uh, to our, our business when it was in the, the kind of adolescent stages. Um, but not everyone's going to have that kind of like national uh, moment. Um, but then from there, it's just, you know, like, how do you develop relationships? How do you kind of do a, a lot of little things? There's a book by James Clear called Atomic Habit, which I imagine most people have read. so far but the, the basic idea is if you can focus on one percent improvement then you're going to be uh, much further along than if you're looking for these giant home runs so a big thing for us is you know rehashing the word focus and rehashing kind of like these small incremental changes that may not seem like much of a big deal but when you do it you know 200 times a year it ends up being huge so that's kind of the philosophy that we want uh, and I think that's something that builds a more sustainable uh, a more stress-free type of business kind of less drama and uh, you know I think it, it I think there can be a lot of anxiety uh, a team will feel from a founder who's always trying to shoot for that next uh, you know home run or, or moonshot kind of idea yeah. for sure uh, let's talk about the team for a second so how do you grow a team from you know you A bootstrap company starting you know practically from zero into you know eight figures nine figures kind of an ecom brand yeah well I haven't quite made it to eight figures yet so uh, <laughs> but but my goal is uh, uh, we're not there yet but I, I I think kind of the sweet spot is to generate about a million dollars of revenue per team member and how do you build a team that is lean and focused and uh, working on the, the projects have the biggest impact and Uh, especially as a bootstrap company because there are so many different opportunities you could chase but the reality is not all opportunities are the same so for yeah. example a couple of years ago we used to sell into Europe and uh, you know we love our European customers we love having product there um, it was a small percentage of our business probably like 15 to 20 percent which is not like in, entirely small it's, it's still a big chunk but I asked myself like how hard is it to sell you know, one product to someone in America versus one product to someone in Europe and have I captured all the people in America and the answer was no so what was happening is I'm putting these resources into to selling into Europe um, which are harder more expensive you know less profitable when I could have been putting those resources into to selling to uh, to our audience here in America so we made the very hard decision of, of pulling out of Europe completely and you um, You know that's allowed us to to continue to grow and and really have like our biggest years ever uh, over the past three years. you know we've seen incremental growth since we made that decision. But it's very hard because you're essentially yeah. you're you saying know, no to like twenty percent you're saying no, yeah, to to twenty percent stuff like that. and we've said no a lot. you know we've said no to to selling on Amazon. We've still said uh, just recently said no to to buying uh, advertising on uh, Facebook. Um, so there's There's a lot of times that you know you have to say no to things uh, because it allows you to say yes to the things that really make a big impact on your business yeah um, and what about the you know in terms of the team structure and you know wh- what would be you know the key kind of members you'd like to have with you on the first steps of growth how does it look on your end yeah um, you know a little bit more details into our strategy is we want to be as lean as possible so you Um, if, if possible 
outsourcing anything that's not a core competency to us is, is one of our strategies. Uh, if we feel like it can be done better by somebody out of house, then you know we want to do that. So the things that we do in house are very few and far between. You know, developing products, um, the core values, uh, the messaging, you know, those kind of things. Customer customer experience, I think, is something that can't be done uh, better out of house. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, content creation and then uh you know like warehousing contract manufacturing all these things uh, we there's no way we can do it better than than uh, suppliers on the marketplace so be real lean uh, there's a, a book by um, andy geez i think it's andy kistler called eat people which is basically that that kind of concept and then the other big thing for us was our hiring process we integrated uh the the hiring process called top grading uh, about three years ago and it's just been phenomenal for the business and bringing in team members who represent our core values and who, you know, it's funny because you hire people and you're, there's been times where you, I've hired people and be like, well, I can always fire them uh, down the road if it doesn't work. And that is the worst thing to be saying uh, whenever you hire someone. The, the, the thing you want to be saying uh, when you're hiring someone is I cannot wait for this person to start. They're going to make such a big impact to the business. And if they're, if you're not saying that to yourself, don't hire them, you know, and, and top grading was a way for us to really get to know our team members better and to understand the way they work. And um, people are amazing and people are, are really great and talented, but working at Beard Brand can be a very challenging place to work because that there's not a lot of management or direction. You have a lot of autonomy. And for people who are looking for that guidance, you're not going to get it here. So it, it's really important to find people who thrive in that kind of environment. Uh, yeah. so that they can be successful. And uh, uh, we've had some great, incredible team members who just, they don't thrive in that uh, environment. And then they go on and they, they kill it at other places. And I think it's just a matter of really making sure that your culture fit uh, aligns with your, your team member, uh, their own their own personal. Yeah, uh, I, I, I love how, how, your growth, how your growth is, you know, eventually value-led and brand-led, you know, throughout the company, right, from the inside out. Uh, and it shows, obviously. Uh, it's, it's great to see brands like uh, yours uh, grow. Um, and it would be great, you know, talking only from a marketing perspective to kind of see, so how did you build your marketing team and activities, you know, throughout that journey? Yeah, I mean, um, a, a lot of it was me uh, in the early days. I was kind of the, the jack of all trades. And, and then my business, I'm fortunate that my business partner, she handles the operations. Side of things, so all the the work, you know, the the Google spreadsheets and stuff like that. I, I generally don't have to look at. So, you know, a lot of it was just kind of like, here are the things that I'm doing. How do I hire someone to do the things that I hate? Uh, so, like video editing uh, was one of the the early things. Um, um, customer experience was kind of one of those things in the early days, and um, and then you know we've um, we've always kind of like gone back and forth between, you know, doing marketing in-house and working with agencies. I think there's, um, I, I think I've kind of come to the, the the realization after 10 years that no agency is going to grow your business, um, but an agency will allow your business to grow. And what that means is like you as the, the lead of your, your marketing team needs to have a strategy that uh, an agency can execute on. And uh, you can hold them accountable to, and they will help grow the business, but they're not growing the business, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. I think there's a, a lot of false expectations for a lot of entrepreneurs where it's like, oh, hey, I work with this agency who worked with, you know, Manscaped and Manscaped's now doing, you know, whatever million dollars a year. If I just work with them, they're going to do the same thing for me. Well, the reality is Manscaped probably came to them with, a very good strategy for what they're trying to do. And they knew their product, they knew their audience, they knew how to like have that, that call to action. And, uh, you know, they have to relay that information onto the agency for the agency to, to be successful. Because the reality is like agencies really aren't going to invest the same amount of energy into learning your brand and your mission and your voice that uh, you do internally. So um, I think with tapered expectations and you have realistic expectations for what success can look like. And then you know, like you can maintain longer relationships with your agencies, which will, you know, kind of prevent this uh, 
dig enough to care to, to check to see if it's growing kind of thing that happens with a lot of companies so yeah i don't know i don't know it's tough. yeah no as you said i mean eventually strategies should come from from the inside uh, you should be the one leading the strategy and you know taking all the help you can get with execution but eventually you're the one that defines the, your business strategy right that's the yeah, especially from a, a small company, you know, founder like company, I think if you're like Nike or something like that, then yeah, it makes sense to to work with uh, who's their agency out in Eugene or something. But um, yeah, like for most, most small companies that should be coming from you. Yeah, uh, for sure. You know, I, you know, I'm can, can speak about myself as well. So, you know, strategy obviously is in house and I have team members that yeah, also very much dealing with the brand side of things that are more in-house, like content and social influencers, uh, all these kind of uh, activities. And I have a lot of experts I just use, like uh, you know, paid advertising, SEO, CRO, that are kind of helping us from the outside. And I'm kind of part of the team, but you know, they're not. They don't need to sit in-house, uh, in my opinion. As long as you have the strategy in place and you know everything is organized, uh, I think it's you know, the hybrid model really, really works. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like yeah. anything, like communication is the key, you know, like, and it has to happen both ways. I think a lot of um, agencies, um, you probably have a hard time getting the, the right kind of communication from their clients. You know, clients are probably just like, why is this not working? Why is that not working? What are you doing? Like, should you do, uh, yeah. you know, or, or like kind of over the shoulder qu quarterbacking and it should be more about, Here's our plan. Here's our vision. Here's our brand voice. You know, here's why this ad works and this doesn't. This ad doesn't work because it's kind of aligned with these core values. And you know, I kind of have this expectation that if my clients and my customers know what the brand core values are, then the reality is like my team and my uh, agencies they should know that as well. So if if they're not investing a time to figure that out, then there is. Um, I do think that's kind of one of the things that you should look for with your agencies is that willingness to, to really understand your brand and your, your mission. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, the same thing that you said about, uh, about uh, hiring, you know, in-house man team members, you know, there is a cultural fit you need to find with, you know, also your, you know, service providers uh, that they, you know, you're using. I, you know, definitely agree with it. Um, and yeah, communicating the brand, you know, making sure everyone is aligned. They're kind of a team member eventually, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, um, with time, that's hopefully what, what happens. You know, I, I think the, the beauty of agencies is you can kind of give them that test run and know within a month if they're going to be that right kind of culture fit without that long-term commitment to them. Yeah. Um, what would be, you know, the best tip you can give entrepreneurs that are starting or bootstrapping? Um, you know, they have kind of some money to invest in their business, obviously, but you know, they need to keep the the ball rolling. What would you say uh, the biggest tip you would you could give them? Well, there's uh, I got a few tips. Uh, one of them alludes back to a company we talked about earlier, which is Nike, and uh, you know, also Eric Rice, and just do it. You know, like just go out there and do it. Don't research ad nauseum and until you're blue in the face you know you've got to uh learn through doing is uh, probably the best way to learn and don't be afraid to make mistakes you know uh, one thing that i always tell myself especially in the early days is like um you know i've got ten thousand customers let's say and like here's a decision i make and it's going to affect ten thousand customers well my long-term goal is to have a million customers a year you know so statistically speaking while i may screw up or piss off you know, 10,000 customers, which may seem like a lot. In the grand scheme of things, when I have a million customers, that's, that's inconsequential. So you have to be willing to kind of do things that, that may upset your, your current customer base, knowing that, you know, your long-term customer base is, is going to maybe believe and, and do something differently. Another thing is if you are a bootstrap company uh, and you want to, you know, like you align with the same values that I align with, uh, you kind of alluded to this in the earlier call. One of my businesses is called Area 627. And uh, we partner up with other bootstrap companies and, you know, kind of uh, help them as a resource and growing their business and maintaining that um, um, that partnership. Uh, the, the best clients are going to be 
or the best partners are going to be ones that are 100% owners. They have no other business partners and they're looking for uh, someone to come in as a business partner and, and mm-hmm. give them a lot of, uh, I mean, the value of business partnerships, which to me are um, huge. I, I can't speak highly enough for having a business partner. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, what was the craziest thing you've done <laughs> in terms of marketing for B brands? Um, I mean, we've done some, <laughs> excuse me. We, we like to have fun during, uh, April fool's day. Um, so like those are, those are probably crazy. They, they don't do anything in terms of like marketing, but one year I had a uh, beard extension and they just looked r- ridiculously, you know, hideous. So I thought nobody would take this as real. And then people got mad at us and they're like, we're unsubscribing. And then, um, uh, we sold uh, corduroy pillows one year because they're making headlines. Um, yeah. So we, we kind of have some jokes around here. We sold um, um, uh, last April Fools. We had a bread brand. Everyone misspells beard brand as bread brand. So we sold some some oil, <laughs> some, some oil for your bread, uh, uh, which uh, I don't know. We, we, we like that's the thing is like. At the end of the day, you know, when you own your business, you just got to do things that you enjoy. And like I said, once your business gets to that one and a half to three million dollars of revenue, uh, everything is just like it's just like <laughs> I wish I could tell you how special and incredible that opportunity is. Like if you're an entrepreneur with a business of that size, you have so much more than the majority of people in the world. And, uh, you yeah. know, I know business is stressful and it's hard, um, but if you have a profitable business at, at that size, then then uh, you're very fortunate. So we just kind of recognize how fortunate we are in life. And, you know, we just want to do things that we enjoy. Amazing. Eric, thank you so much. Uh, it was uh, inspiring and, you know, uh, lots of value for our audience for sure. Uh, so thank you so, so much for coming and sharing your journey with us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. I uh, love love talking about this stuff. So uh, hopefully I did bring value to the listeners. For sure. And uh, best of luck with the beer brands. <laughs> Thank you. Until next time. <laughs> As promised, we're offering to all of our Host of Pro subscribers $300 off your first month with Maple. Subscribe now and use this code HTP300 when you book your first package with Maple. Have an amazing day.